It was kind of inspired by an interview that I did with Bosco, um, I don't know, three or four years ago, where his, where his mom jumped out and sat down on the interview and told the story of when Bosco was 12 years old, witnessed the homicide, mm -hmm. and she sent her son to court to testify against whoever was the shooter. But this was at a time when Bosco was 12. He wasn't from Inglewood. He hadn't even moved to Inglewood. I think he moved to Inglewood shortly after that. I think that's the reason why mm -hmm. they moved to Inglewood. He wasn't from Queen Street. He wasn't banging. He didn't jump off the porch. But there's been some, some, some people out there opining that Bosco was a snitch because he told on a homicide when he was 12 years old. What's your what's your take on that? Um, I've been hearing you know the different things about it, and um, until it wasn't until I went kind of research, you know, the dynamics of what happened, you know, and uh, basically, you know, you can't deny that he did get up there and tell what happened on a, on a homicide that he saw, but uh, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna sit here and call him a snitch. One reason I'm not gonna call him a snitch because if he wasn't interacting with gang people, he was a regular citizen. And his mother told him to go do that. Then I think most people in America was going to go do what their mother going to say. Dudes can sit here after they done been to the pen and ran a hood or been from the hood 10 to 12 years and sit here and be like, you know, that's snitching. Come on, dude. If your mama would have did the same thing to you at 12 years old, if you wasn't banging yet, if you didn't know the rules yet, you would have did the same thing. Now, on the flip side of that, there's no way in the world my mother would have let me got up on the witness stand and, and said anything. My mother was a strong advocate about, you know what I mean, you keep your mouth closed. You ain't saw nothing. I don't care what you think you saw. You know what I mean? So I believe his mother dropped the ball in letting a 12-year-old get on the stand in a homicide that didn't have nothing to do with them specifically. You know, I know she might have felt she could have been a Christian woman and felt she or a religious person and felt she was doing the right thing. But there's no way in the world my mother would have let me get up there. Oh. And, and I wouldn't let my kids get up there based on, this has nothing to do with you. Absolutely. I'm going to just be honest with you. So Absolutely. that's where I think the ball got dropped at, you know what I mean, by his mother, you know, basically even letting him or telling him to do this, you know what I mean. Um, I mean, it's her son. It's her decision. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit there. And I mean, he didn't know the rules. He wasn't vetted. He wasn't, you know, we learn these rules in the streets or at home. And when he didn't get them at home, when he joined the gang, I'm guarantee you they told him these are the rules, man. Yeah. You know, 12-year-olds is a baby, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And dudes can sit here and talk about that G shit all they want. 12-year-old is a baby. Unless you, like, activate. Some dudes are active at that age. But, but he wasn't even a gang member at all. Now, um, if I remember correctly, you, you kind of jumped off the porch at 12, right? Yeah, when, yeah. When I was from the hood. Yeah, I was, I was 12. I was, yeah, I was fighting Crips at 12. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. And I knew the rules already. But I didn't learn the rules from the streets. I learned from my mother. You see somebody doing something that don't have nothing to do with you, you mind your damn business, you know. So I was able to get those rules before I got to the hood. But once you, I got to the hood, riding around on my bike, 11, 10, 11, 12 years old, man, you knew the rules already, dude. You, you know, you keep your mouth closed about something you see that ain't got nothing to do with you. And when, if it got something to do with you, you come tell the homies, you don't go tell the police. Or you go tell your parents. You don't go tell the police, though. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm agree with you 100 percent that the mom, the mom is the is the the main reason for whatever happened with Bosco. I was living with my dad when I was 12, and there's no way my dad would have told the police. My son didn't see nothing. Right. I don't care what my son told you. He said he saw. I'm telling you, he didn't see nothing. Get away. You know, he would have never uh, even allowed that. Um, just because of the sheer uh, danger of it, you know, why is my 12-year-old son going to tell on a, a homicide? And even for the police to want that to happen, to want to expose someone to to the dangers of doing that, they don't care. They're not no, here to no, protect you, you us. Couldn't, you couldn't have, you know, because this guy could have, you know, easily got his head knocked off for doing that. You know what I mean? You was old enough to get up there. We, you old enough for us to knock your head in. And on the flip side of that, which I know don't nobody want to hear this part, but, you know, you don't know what the other person did. The other person, I mean, I don't know the dynamics of the whole thing. And you're talking the, about the victim. The victim. He could have raped somebody's daughter, and in a, in, a, in a moment of rage, the father did this. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm not, not, not out here saying it's cool to, you know, to do violent crimes, but I'm just saying we don't know what the dynamics were. So in, in, those, two, in those instances, like I said, it's a lot of dynamics behind that. Yeah, I, I'm going to disagree to the people that are calling Bosco a snitch. I don't even know why that some of these people are so heavy, so hard 
on um, pressing this line that that Bosco was a snitch because of something he did twelve years old. Because he Bosco, you know it, what it, I mean. It, he talk a lot of shit, <laughs> you know what I mean. And 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 don't get me wrong, you get to talking about this gangster shit. You know, people are gonna go run down. You know, same with me. When I stepped on the scene, I stepped on street TV. They seen my face. People got to picking up phones. Who is this dude? You know what I mean? Yeah. From 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 everywhere. Everybody that knew somebody, I'm sure I do the same thing. Who is this cat? I'm gonna do a background check on him. You know, so so you know Bosco is out there. He's in the spotlight. And don't get me wrong, people are still gonna have their opinions. Some people, you know, you you can't change. They can, my grandmother can call the police and they'll be like, your grandmother's a rat. You know what I mean? You know, so some people you just not gonna. You can't you, call yeah, grandma you, yeah, rat. Right, right, but you know. Some people you're not gonna be able to sway, you know. But I, I, I wouldn't call him a snitch. I right? think if you if you objective and you're using logic, there's just no way on God's green earth that a 12 year old kid who did not jump off the porch that is not from no set is a snitch. I mean, it's just as simple as that, you know. And I'm gonna disagree with everybody that's gonna call Bosco a snitch. He ain't a snitch. He wasn't from Queen Street. He wasn't a blood. He didn't jump off the porch. His mama put him up to it. He was only 12. And that's what it is. But Al Sharpton. Thanks for watching this video clip of Streets and Scholars podcast with Alex Alonso and FG. If you want to listen to the entire episode, go to your favorite podcast platform and type in Streets and Scholars. But we're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. And thanks for listening to another episode of Streets and Scholars.